let's interact with the ledger. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. So does in does doing all this stuff alum, actually make time pass? No. Awesome. I imagine it doesn't. Theft. You don't uh, exactly. It takes about half an hour to piece one together. Using so I can pass two hours, which isn't enough, really. Thin, see-through copy. Ah, here we go. Misconduct Most fine. A monetary penalization ranging from twenty to two hundred and fifty real. Severe cases allow for one thousand real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields, but they appear pleasantly vague. So, the misconduct fine, I guess, do I have to be catching someone in the act of doing a crime? In which case, uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that, because there's nobody around. Hmm. Okay. I think what I'll do is I will pass time via the ledger, and if that's not enough, the then the I will go ahead and reread some of the books that I've got. It takes okay, so an hour to piece one the unsolvable case. A.K.A. Leslie and Burke. A.K.A. The public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk is a cursed case. It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it? It is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in general, know it's unsolvable. Leslie will always take his pants off when he's drunk. Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man. And you can't lock them away because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. The only way for Leslie to stop flashing his genitals to bypasses and for Burke to stop dismantling signage and rear-view mirrors would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which, in their 40s or 50s, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability on par with you ceasing to produce the expression. Don't we just keep them off the streets? You would think that, but you're wrong. Where's the fun in exposing your genitals or breaking stuff in your own home? No, Leslie and Burke are on the corner of Main Street and Perdition because that's where the action is. Can you keep yourself off the streets? No, I clearly can't. I, I can't even pay the rent for the room. Threatening, fines, dragging them to the station. Locking them up in the hell holes they live in. Locking them up in the station. Hypnotherapy. Even trying to get the local gang of Zemiaki to take them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol, so Burke and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all, and still the complaints wouldn't stop, as they hadn't stopped for ten years. It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV, and Special Consultant TH, had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of Perdition. And what is Leslie doing? So, Satellite Officer Jean Vicmer. So, yeah, that's not a uh, measurehead. I think I accidentally said that uh, Jean-Luc was measurehead, but that can't be correct. I uh, forget what TH was. It's been a while. Uh, so, what was Leslie doing? So, Leslie will take his pants off when he's drunk. So, he is public indecency. Good. You're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things, and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. The case becomes considerably less comic one day when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. Why would he do that? He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. The officer is also drunk. Way more drunk than Burke there. And let's be fair, you also have party eyes. You slam the hardened plastic board in his face, then proceed to beat him unconscious with it. Ow. In the process, the ledger sustains damage. 
The compartment within, reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. The officer began to cry, reports Leslie, who, at this point, is tending to Burke. This seems like the case file was written from the perspective of Leslie and Burke, not myself. Kill them. They broke it. Ow. He came at us, and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. You've smashed it open on poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk anymore. That's not good news. Can't get out of his apartment, an invalid. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows? But both drunks are off the street. The complaints stop. The unsolvable case is solved. Yeah, just a, a little bit of police brutality and hyper-violence. Which is also why the officer responsible narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. The end. Do you want to read another one? That didn't pass any time. I started the case file at 0204. It said it would take half an hour to do, and it's still 0204. So I have no idea how I'm going to pass time. The square bullet hole murders. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks, on her rocking chair, with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. But That's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you know is, the entry wound was square-shaped. You never found the bullet. And then, another body showed up, also with a square hole in his forehead. A sequence color? Who knows? Those pages are missing. What next? One day you may still catch the man with the square gun. I'm, I'm healing a lot more morale than I thought I would, despite the fact that it's very late at night. I thought I'd be taking morale damage. But we got 10 XP as well. Okay, the couch in an unexpected location. Some assholes brought their couch outside and hung out on it. In the middle of the street, on the roof, on the hillside by the motorway. You know, at an unexpected location. They were young, and they thought they looked cool on it. They actually looked like assholes, they looked really cool like models, they looked really cool like a rock band. I feel like a rock band would be the most likely to try and do this. Yes, as you've said here, insufferable rock and roll assholes. Young people are the worst. So anyway, you got a complaint about the damn sofa, or couch, or whatever it was. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations. They took it, too, where they also took photos of themselves on it, and smoked cigarettes, and drank coffee because they felt it's intellectual. Is that all they were doing? Cigarette butts, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up, and you did. So congratulations to you. Case solved. That was it? Did I ever catch those guys? No. You didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real goddamn job. You don't have time to be chasing down the couch assholes. You have a real job to do. What next? That's not really solving it then though, is it? Because they're still around, so they're still going to try and put the couch somewhere else. All right. Last one, murder at the hookah parlor. Murder. Tum 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 at the hookah parlor was a case originally assigned to an officer called Joseph Mills, who is now dead. Of circumstances completely unconnected to murder at the hookah parlor. Wait, how? Beaten to death by a throng of Villa Lobos gang members when him and his partner J.M., only initials mentioned, answered a call one night. It's a sad story, and it isn't really represented in your case files. Stop stalling and get to the murder at the hookah parlor. I'm not trying to stall, I'm trying to pass time and it's just not working. All right, well, on with the murder. Joseph Mills was on this case that he just couldn't solve. Was doing it solo. Said it was a real nutcracker, a real brain twister. Was on it for, like, a month. 
The captain got impatient. Shit or get off the pot, Mills. Mills didn't get off the pot. Not yet. He kept at it for a couple of weeks more, racking his brains, running with every theory as outlandish as they seemed. Still couldn't solve the murder at the Uka parlor. Tough case, he said. Toughest he's ever had. Wait, was Joseph Mills a good cop? No. He was awful. Awful sense of humor, too. The worst jokes you've ever heard. Really rapey. Still, he'd been on it for months now. Said it was the final case. Said it was uncrackable. That murderer vanished into thin air. That goddamn hookah parlor was all he talked about. Go on. Okay. So the case is handed to you because Mills isn't getting anywhere. And you look into it. Here's the setup. A young man is found dead in the hookah parlor. You know, those places where you go and smoke bubblegum flavored vapor all day. And you get high off it? No, it's soot and water vapor. It doesn't do anything. Okay, really cool, really stupid. I mean, I've been to a shisha parlor before, so really cool. Yeah, really lame. So anyway, young man in his 20s found with his skull busted open right on the floor of the hookah parlor in the middle of the day. No one else is in there. Only client that day. In perfect health, too. Some kind of movie producer. No one enters. No one exits. He's just sucking on his watermelon hookah all morning. All noon. Like he usually does. He's a regular. No calls. Nothing. Just sucking on the hookah until 15.45. Then bam. He's dead on the floor with his skull busted open. Blood everywhere. What happened? How can it be? Mills has no idea. Invisible assassin. Movie deal gone sour. Girl at the counter did it. Nothing fits. Eerie. Man just dropped dead. So you go to the parlor. You see cushions around the table. Tables low, heavy, really sharp edge. He sucked hookah, stood up, passed out, hit his head on the table and died? See? You can't even read the thing without solving it. Yeah, it was that. Turns out hookah does do something. It turns off your brain's oxygen supply, and you don't notice it until you get up to go to the bathroom. He must have sucked a lot of it, and what was he doing there for six hours? What was he doing there? Smoking hookah. Didn't you hear? I don't know. Trying to come up with a movie script, maybe. Anyway. That was murder at the hookah parlor. Joseph Mills wasn't a good detective, and about 30 minutes has passed piecing it together. Next. 30 minutes haven't passed piecing it together. It is still 0204. <sighs> All right, just murder. go through this again to see what Joseph the Mills last option okay. was. So the really stupid. Yeah. No one in uh -huh. Mills. So see, hookah, he must have sucked a lot of it. Yeah. He liked his hookah. Stephen was his name. Stephen. Okay. Smoking hookah. I know what he was called. Didn't you hear? Right. Not much has changed in the Ah, uh, yeah. Not much has changed. A thick layer of cold dust. It's dark. The echo is so prominent. It's impossible to discern what the voices are saying or what's producing them. What's happening? Maybe it's coming from somewhere upstairs. You should investigate. This sounded real. Not imagined. It's Up dark. Inside, the echo is so prominent. Murderer? Maybe it's coming from this sounded real. Investigate. A lush like maybe you could paint still. It's good to have Nope. Hello! I would like to sell some stuff. Hello, hello. Let Ooh. me know if I can help. Oh yes, anything. of course. Do you know anything about the traffic menace on the loose? Traffic? I'm sorry, officer, but I don't drive. Wait, why don't you drive? I just don't like it very much. Movement on the road never really gelled well with the movement of my thoughts. But didn't you hear it when the traffic menace drove over your roof? Now that I think about it, I do remember hearing a thunderous noise the other night. Some kind of powerful electric vortex hitting the shop and then moving on. A vortex? Sounds fascinating. Doesn't that mean you don't have any idea who the driver was? That uh, sounds fascinating. Yeah, it was pretty wild. I didn't really know what to make of it, but I know it meant something. Alright, 
right? Of course. It's in working order still, isn't it? Just Can I actually do anything with the tape? So... I have this. Can I interact with this? No. Do I actually have any tapes at all? I don't think so, right? Typical Martinez street light sits. Seven hundred. How how are you supposed to get seven hundred real? You see rows of toy soldiers. Oh, uh, those are all the same. Okay. Uh, hmm. No, I, I guess that's it. Uh. Let's make a save inside the shop as well, because we did get a bit of XP for talking to it. Roy! Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help. There is anything. something I want to sell. Sure. Let me have a look. I would like to sell my clothes. I'm not purchasing any more no. clothes. All right, anything checkbox. else you're thinking of selling? Okay. So, I don't want to sell the rifle because I'm trying to match the gun that killed the hanged man. And this would be a good comparison or a reference point. And there isn't much else I can actually sell to make it worth it. So I guess we'll go with this. Okay, so I've lost the dock worker shift card. I need eight cents. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Postcard? Do I need a postcard? I don't think so, right? Another postcard. Uh, I'm not going to sell that one. Uh, oh, Portia. Mm. Yeah. All right. Let's sell the Grand Couron 37. I don't feel good about having to do that. And I might sort of reset if I, if I find a way to get money some other method then i may reset to do that because the shift workers id card i could i i don't think I actually um showed it to manana so that might have been something handy to do uh, and i'm gonna take off the the boom box there we go yeah i i suppose i've been spending too much money on just like clothes and stuff but <sighs> Gott, my friend. Hello. Can I help you? My bill. Twenty real. I have twenty real. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another twenty real tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know how I'm gonna get it. How could anyone forget, asshole? Right. Goodbye. All right. That will do. We will close the day off. We finally have the ability to go into our room. So, before we do that, I suppose we should have a look inside the stuff. Bottle. Make a, a head start on tomorrow's bill. Ooh, actually. Something else. Yeah. Uh, is that the fan? Nope, it's another bottle. That's the window. The window stands. Yeah. This is another bottle. Yep. Huh? All right. I think that's all the bottles. Oh, no, there's, there's, there's literally one on the middle of the floor that I can see. And yeah, it won't let me highlight it to pick it up. It's right there by my feet. All right, well, can I, what's this? Locked, okay. This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are right now. Ah, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. Run yourself a bath. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. Undress, close your eyes and submit. The water is only lukewarm but still comforting, like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks. 
like sad duckies. Take the beer cans out, leave the beer cans in. Let's take them out. Now you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. Imagine something. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. Then, houses along a narrow street. A video rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. We got some more XP and another skill point. And yes, I am full up on my thoughts. So I'd have to get rid of something in order to internalize something else. So we could try seeing uh, what white checks we want to do. But I think that's actually better to leave until tomorrow morning once I've healed all of my morale and health back. Then use all my tools to get as many skill points as I can. Then level up something that is close to not passing. Linger in the tub a little. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. So this might be a way of healing health and morale without actually having to go to sleep for the night. What are you doing? You're not some fat fish in a fucking aquarium. Time to get moving. Does this just keep going? Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, same thing. All right, the get water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. Got 30 XP for that. Okay. The mirror? A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Okay. Encyclopedia 13. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. Electrochemistry 3. Uh, attempt to stop the expression from happening, but we recited the poem, Tommy. So we did get a few bonuses to that. And then challenging, use the chain cutters to fix the faucet and stop steam from fogging up the mirror with the tools not in hand. Let the mirror be for now. So let's interact with the mirror. So chain cutters. And again, we might as well make a save. So we know that there is a save outside the pawn shop, inside the pawn shop, and then a new save in the room. All right, so the mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Let's try. In it, your face Encyclopedia. Adorned. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume Le Million. Guillaume Le Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Mm -hmm. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music in an open air, what de nuit? Somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. So I adopted it? Why? I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it. Click, click. How long ago was the new? Anything else? Like who am I? Why did I become a cop? Why did I drink myself into a living? Or oh, I guess that's it. Why did I adopt it? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. The click? The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. Sometimes you like to add finger pistols to the mix because unlike Guillaume Le Million, you are a police officer. It's your nifty little way to say, I'm armed and dangerous. How long ago was the name? There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression looking good on you or anyone. Two decades, if the calendar is to be trusted. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Anything else? Like who am I? Why did I become a cop? 
Why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of Disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, remains in the dark. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. I guess that's it then. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. Hmm. So electrochemistry is going up. We know the origin and we recited the poem. And I'm just wondering, I think I actually do have some uh, clothing that should help with electrochemistry. Interfacing. This is a white check. So let's try it. The faucet is quite terribly mangled but you just might be able to twist its parts into place. You handle the chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains a recognizable shape. The steam stops. Told you that you needed those chain cutters. Everything is connected. Everything has a purpose. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having to wipe it. Okay, know the origin, no more steam, and recited the poem. Let the beer mirror be. We'll just double check if we have any clothes that can help with electrochemistry. Yep, fingerless gloves. Uh, is there anything else? Savoir faire, yep. Uh, sorry, the, the disco pants. Uh, oh, it was actually this one as well. Okay, so... Uh, taking away savoir faire rather than reaction speed. Yeah, that's fine. And then shades. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the shoes. Composure and savoir faire. Uh, let's go ahead and put these on, because why not? The shoes really aren't doing much for me, just more composure, less savoir faire, and I'll switch them around. Uh, but yeah, okay, so this. Mmm, the luxury of fine things. Just look at those black monk straps. After spending an entire day hustling, who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes on your tired feet? You're right. Beautiful things do make people happy. Beautiful things give you a rush. It's power. Crafting your style. Draping your flesh in silk and leather. Deciding how to present yourself to the world. Remember, when they come to take it away from you, you worked for those shoes. Whether you like it or not, wearing these shoes has made you more liberal. Ultra liberal. And considering how much I've struggled trying to get money, I think having the shoes on might actually just help in general. They're either a gateway drug or a booster pack to get you deeper into free market ideology. Okay. Let's try the mirror one more time. Here we go. It's barely covered in steam in So, we've got a high chance of stopping it. It says impossible, but it's no longer impossible now. It's like something snaps in you. A nerve ending. A thought. A sadness. Your face in the mirror is suddenly clean of the leer that had distorted it for God knows how long. Just like that, it's over. The running gag that your life had become. A sad old man looks back at you. That doesn't mean that we can't make the expression again in the future. It's scary. Oh, my character portrait has changed in the bottom left. So he is no longer smiling in the way that the expression was. All right, well, I'm kind of sad, actually, because I, uh, I quite enjoyed seeing the expression. Even if it was out of pain or something like that, at least it was a smile, rather than, as he says, it's just a sad man looking at you. Alright, are we all done? I think we have exhausted everything that can be done in the room, so let's go to sleep. The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it. Go to sleep.